Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you and we welcome Muslims and uh, uh, we, we hope today we will have a good time together. Uh, Christians, Hindus, Buddhas, Atheists uh, and our beloved Muslims. Uh, actually I was going to talk about science in general but I decided to make it simple and give one question at a time. Uh, in order to make it easier for people to comprehend and to observe the information. Too much information sometimes it's not easy. Uh, I mean for some audience. Uh, you know, we knew that Muslims, they claim, um, especially those who um, uh, they do what it's called da'wah, like to invite you to convert to Islam. And they use science as a very uh, powerful tool these days so in order to convince you that Allah is God, Muhammad is a prophet, and the Quran is obviously a book from God. Otherwise, how the Quran knew this? This is the whole strategy, you know. You, the world today is too much into science. And therefore, we Muslims, we changed the boat. In the old day, it was a sword. Today, our sword is not sharp anymore and we cannot really scare people and make them convert to Islam and we are the most weak people between all mankind all our countries are very weak so what we do we need to find a solution solution is very easy let us make millions of statements that the Quran is a book full of science now I am not against anyone to make a claim any claim he wants about his religion but I'm against people lying, fabricating things is not in the Quran. And today I decide to start with a very simple question and you will see how the Muslims will not be able to answer it. If we go in the Quran and Quran as you know, Muslim they claim that it is coming from Allah uh, directly to Muhammad through the angel Jibreel. Which means there is no way and there is no uh, a chance of a mistake like an error of scribe or etc. Because those things can happen. You know, we are human and we make mistakes. Uh, but when the Quran says something and the Muslims confirm that every word in the Quran is from Allah, then the Quran have no choice to survive the question. I'm not sure how many Muslims are listening, but obviously none of them will be able to answer the question, which is very simple, extremely simple. In chapter 41, verse number, and by the way, we are not quoting verse as Muslims they do when they quote the Bible. You can read 10 verses before and 10 verses after, but because we are the Quran is not like the Bible. There's nothing. There's no connection between the verse before it and the verse after it most of the time. Let us say maybe 80 to 90 percent of the time, verses they have nothing to do with each other. It's like uh, somebody is suffering from a flight of thoughts, and he is making stuff up. You know, he don't know what to say. Somebody will talk, and he talks say nothing. So you will notice with me here if you read, uh, there is no connection. I mean, what is that? Uh, he jumped from a topic to a topic, being zakat, and then suddenly he jumped to how Allah created the earth. Anyway, see, is that you deny him who created the earth in two days? And do you join equal with him? He is the Lord of all the world. The translation here is not accurate. Rabbul Alameen is the Lord of the two worlds, the genie and the human. Muslim believe there is a word of genie. Uh, then in verse number 10 he says, He set an earth mountain standing firm above it, and he bestowed blessing on earth, and measured therein all things to give them nourishment, and in due preparation, in four days. Okay, so the earth created in two days. Allah, he made everything in the top of the earth in four days. Now the Muslim, they will say here to you, because this will show contradiction in the Quran, uh, Oh, the four days is including the two days but I think all of you you can tell it doesn't say that there's there is no way 
that Allah is saying, and supposedly if Allah exists, that it's clear. I mean, and he he said, you see in Arabic, there's letter wa, wa, which means and. So he is speaking in order, which makes sense. In order, first he created the earth in two days. Okay, the earth created in two days. And what he did in the coming four days, it's the verse in the front of you. The Muslim, in order to escape this, they say, no, these four days include those two days, which is false. You know, you can tell that's not true. However, two days or four days will not solve the problem because the problem is bigger than this. So Allah, in four days, he created all the measurement for the earth after he created the earth in the first two days. And then he went to the sky and the sky was a smoke, which means there's nothing. And then he made them seven heavens in two days. And look how simple my question is. And maybe many of you don't never thought. Of, actually, I never saw somebody th thinking about this question before. Uh, how come Allah took him six days to create the earth? Yet it took him two days to create the heavens, the space, the stars. Any Muslim have an idea? Why it took more time to create the small, tiny, little, tiny earth than creating the rest of the universe? Who as a Muslim have an idea? You see how simple the question is? I mean, it's very simple. Allah took him six days to create the earth and the grass and the trees. Allah took him two days to create the stars, all the sky. Any Muslim have an answer? Think about it. If Allah is all knowledgeable and Allah is all powerful okay now the powerful Allah he was so slow in creating the earth and then creating all you see we are not talking about creating the stars only we are talking about creating the rest of the universe the rest of the universe created in two days How that can be true? Do we have any Muslim he is thinking about it? It's obvious that the one who made this verse, he thought the earth is bigger than the sky. <laughs> or maybe in the same size, but he thought it's empty there's i mean like uh, he look in the sky he see like some lights there okay there's a moon uh, there is a sun okay he, so he after he created the earth he put those things there, there for us well we are not in the stage of contradiction now the, the, forget about contradiction forget about con contradiction in front of us because uh, it says in different verses quran saying that allah he created the earth and the heaven in six days and after that he left himself above the chair but here we have a different problem it took Allah four days to finish grass and trees and fruits and two days only to create all is in the sky including the sky itself the space itself the galaxies How we can explain that? Any Muslim? You see, this is a very simple question, and you will see Islam collapse right away. Very simple. I want, if you are going to make a video, you don't need to load all the video on your channel. Only the important point, like if a Muslim who want to answer, you know, you, you, you can cut the video, because this is the question for today. And we can support with what we are showing the screen with many evidence. Actually, it's in front of us, clear. I mean, what, what, what evidence we want more? You see, there is no way for misquotation. Allah, he created everything on the earth in four days. Simple. 
Who said that? The Quran. And he created the earth in two days. Very simple. Two plus four, six. Some Muslim they will say to you, no, 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 it's not two plus four. All of them they are four. Even even that is a stupid. Because four to the earth you can answer this. You know, if we look together at uh, Google, uh, if we use uh, Google Earth, and we try to uh, look at the space. I mean, we have billions of stars, and each one of them can swallow the Earth as a little, little tiny, uh, 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 like a piece of dust. So how come the earth took six days to create and this amazing, huge, massive space took him two days? Anyone? <clears throat> Do you see how many stars, galaxies, I mean, it's, it's scary. We are just little tiny, little tiny dust, not even a dust, in this massive space. And the one is talking, remember, is Allah. It's not Muhammad, supposedly. Muslim cannot say, oh, Muhammad, he thought he's a human. All of us, we, you know, we make mistakes. He made assumption. He is just maybe glorifying his God, uh, meditating. No, this is not him talking. This is Allah talking. And Allah give us days. In the Bible it says God created heaven and earth. And then he did his design for both. So heaven is exist, earth is exist, and God he worked in his design for them. But now we have here, we have six days still the heaven is not exist. There was nothing. This, the word is Dukhan, which means nothing. And then he made them seven heavens, and then he made the stars. So how... If you want to stay on my page, the one who called himself David Wood, never use the name of somebody else, even if you, are, if, even, even you don't want to insult, but obviously you are here to insult. Don't use the name of David Wood. Be a man. Use your name. Use whatever your name. Call yourself potato, tomato. This is your business. But don't come here insulting somebody using a name. Very bad strategy. Stupid of you. Shameful people. You know, uh, yesterday I went in a walk. I saw David Wood. I heard the Muslim saying to him, uh, Allah is punishing you because you have two children. They are sick. They are ill. I mean, very shameful behavior. Disgusting. You have no dignity. All your prophet kids, supposedly, according to you, they are they die when they are infant. So if you are saying Allah is punishing him, that's mean Allah he punished Muhammad too. Stupid people. I don't know what they did. Uh, but uh, trash. Anyway, so the question is. Why it took Allah six days to create the earth and grass and trees, yet it took him only two days to create this massive... You see, we can keep going in the sky. I mean, this is endless. You see, and this is what a human being uh, a map is. This is not what the sky is. You see, the sky is way massive. We, we do not know how big it is. Nobody knows. Our science is very limited. We don't know really what is there. How big it is. We have no idea still, but what we knew it is that the earth is nothing compared to this. So how Allah took him six days to create the earth and two days to create the whole sky. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Muhammadan? How that can be true?
Muhammad in the top of the seven heaven. And, and, you know, like tons of stories of Muslim Muhammad, and it's funny. Like Muhammad, he went to the seven heaven, to the last heaven, in the top of a flying mule, and he came back eight hours after. He came, he went at night. So how, how long the night is? Eight hours, ten hours? And his way back, he stopped in Jerusalem too. So can we believe in the story of Muhammad that he went all the way to the top level of the space. You see, you call it heaven, you call it uh, whatever you want to call it, but it is, according to Muslim, this is the last heaven, that's it. This is the end. In the top of a flying donkey. In a few hours. You see, if this is metaphorical, I will understand. If this is like a vision, I will say, okay, it was a vision. If it is a dream, I will say it was a dream. But Muslim believe strongly that this is happening for real. What do you think? Any Muhammadan have an answer? How such a silly mistake can be done by someone he claimed to be God? How is how big is the size of the earth and the heaven? The Quran confirmed that the earth and the heaven they are the same size. Is that correct, Muslims, or are making things up? Is it true that the earth and the heaven they have the same size? Yeah. You can go to the chapter of Al Baqarah as an example. I think verse number two fifty something, two fifty four to fifty five, something like that. Let us find out what is the size of the heaven of Allah. <clears throat> ah, Two fifty-five. How this is happening? How the chair of Allah is in the same size of the earth and the heaven? You see, when you say that the size of this chair of Allah is the same size of the earth and the heaven. And look at the translation, uh, how it's false it is. It says, His throne doth extend over the heaven and the earth. It doesn't say that in Arabic. It says, We saw the width, the size, not extend change the translation <clears throat> let us see another translation i noticed that most of the muslim translation those are i think they are fake translators they kick one extend over the heaven and the earth extend over the heaven and the earth you know what i will go with this line even though it doesn't say extend, it says wasa. Wasa, like I asked you, uh, uh, how much this makan can take, this place, how many people can take, that is wasa. It's a simply the size. And we can go right now to, uh, uh, to the dictionary. Actually, let us do this. Let us go to uh, the Islamic uh, interpretation and see uh, what it says about this verse. Chapter 2, verse number 255. Give me a second. Chapter 2, verse number 255. And let us read the Islamic interpretation. <clears throat> Please share the link with your friends and let us get more people here so people will learn. All right. This is the Seer Ajalalain, very well known big scholar.
All right. He said, and it's also, uh, let us say here, where it's he speak about uh, his throne, his throne, uh, sub some sub sub sums the heaven and the earth. It says that his knowledge encompass them both. It's also said that the kursi is a throne itself, uh, uh, subsums them on account that it is vast as the hadith. So there's a hadith about it actually. Yeah, good that we mention it. That the, the seven heaven compared to the kursi are like seven silver coins laying in metal shield of an armor. He preserving them, the heavens and the earth, whereas him not does not burden him, he submit above the creation. I mean, did you understand anything from the internal interpretation until now? It also said it been said, and some said they don't know. This is the, this is the scholar. The conclusion they don't know. It's also said. It's also said. It's also said. Okay, what said? His throne submisses, sub, uh, submiss, subsum, sorry, subsum, the heaven and the earth. Okay, his throne is above the earth and the heaven. That's mean the throne of Allah is, we knew how big it is. And that's mean the earth and the heaven, which is created by Allah, which is everything. Allah, he cannot move because look how small the earth and the heaven for him. I mean, he is so big. His throne is so big. So this guy, he lives in the top of his throne. He's like Buddha. Because if this is the space and this is the holy space and his throne is in the size of this space, which is in the top of the earth and the heaven, which means both of them, they are equal. That's mean Allah, he cannot move around his throne because where he will step out. Right? Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Your chair, because kursi, is not an Arabic word. And again, prove that Muhammad, he lied when he says this is a pure Quran. So Allah, he have a kursi, which means a chair. And this chair is at the same size as the earth and the heaven. So Allah, he cannot move from his chair. Where he will go? He's stuck. Because he's out of space. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Uh, uh, a scholar who made his book just to defend the Quran, actually. Not to explain the Quran. Uh, Let us go to Ibn Kathir. <clears throat> it's carried by eight, uh, uh, by eight, you know. And then the Muslim, they claim that those are eight goats, eight mountain goats. All right, let's go to Ibn Kathir and see what he's saying. I will stand under the throne and feel prostrate, and Allah will allow me to remain that position as much as He wills. I will therefore be told, raise your head and speak. So Muhammad is 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 a, is a you see Muhammad when he says, I I will I, actually it doesn't say I will stand under the throne. This is a false translation. It says, Ati تحت الأرض, and try to find it in Sunnah.com. Let us see if we can find it. I think we should be able to find it. Oh. And Muhammad, he claimed that he will be the, the, the master of all the world in the day of resurrection. You see? Sayyidul Qawm. You see, they, 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 they translate lying saying, I will be the leader. It doesn't say I will be the leader. It says I will be Sayyid. 
Sayyid, the master. Sayyid from the word Yasud, which means he is the one who control his authority. All right, let us see where it says, Ati Tahta al Arish. Yeah, it looks like we cannot find this hadith here. Here we go. We found it. We found it. Okay, good. Let us see. Just to show you how they lie in the English translation. In Arabic here it says, فَأَنْ طَلِقْ So I will go and I will stand under the throne. Should be here. Um, okay. Huh. Guys, read carefully. You see how I told you the lie? You remember I told you the lie? Look how we get them busted in the Tafsir Ibn Kathir translation. I shall then set off and come below the throne. Do you see it? Do you see it? Muhammad saying he will go and come and stand below the throne. That's mean not everywhere is below the throne. Is that correct? But the Quran says that the share of Allah is a wisu samawati wal art is the same size of the earth and the sky. So Muhammad obviously is a liar because you do not need to go to be under the throne. You are already under the throne. And this is how you prove that somebody is a fraud. Because why Muhammad say something there and he sees something there here? You want to go and stand under the throne? Why? The throne of Allah, how small it is. And how that can be, think, you know, like, uh, like work with the Quran. And this is Sahih Muslim, hadith number 194. So Muhammad will move and stand under the throne and the Quran saying that the size of the throne is the same size of the heaven and the earth. Is it true that the, the, the Quran uh, confirmed that the earth is like an orbit? You see, the, when Muslim they use the word orbit, you think that like uh, the way we know it, like orbit going in a... We will explain that to you and you will, you will die laughing. I promise. Actually, here we go. Just because you mentioned that uh, this is the question uh, given to me. Let us uh, show it. From Mr. Iboni. Is it true that the Quran confirmed the earth it's like an orbit? I mean, I don't know how the earth is like an orbit, how that can be. I think you need to rephrase your question. However, my friend, the Quran confirmed that the earth is flat and the proof even what we're showing you because in order to be under the throne of Allah let us let us explain to you a better way guys listen with me carefully did Muhammad just say he will stand under the throne of Allah he said that right and we show it to you okay so Allah he will you know Muhammad is now under the throne of Allah do you understand me How I can be about location, it's not metaphorical. Let us read together. Anyway, we show it to you already. You can go back in the video. But if we go to Google Earth, let us see the Earth itself. All right, let us assume <clears throat> that Muhammad was talking from Mecca or from Medina. This is Saudi Arabia. This is Saudi Arabia. Let us zoom in. Okay. We will make a dot in the location of Muhammad just to make it simple for everybody to understand. 
All right. So if we say this is either Muhammad when he said that he was in Mecca or he was in the Medina, and this will be here in this area. All right. So Muhammad will stand under the throne of Allah. The throne of Allah will be here because Muhammad is under. This is the throne of Allah. Right? All right. But as we knew that the earth is not a flat, and if Allah, his throne, is the same size of the earth and the heaven, and over the size, over the earth and the heaven, so how Allah will be in the top of them unless they are flat? You know what I mean? Uh, is, is what I'm saying uh, easy to understand or it's complicated? Muhammad is here in this area. Hmm? And he is under the throne of Allah. But the throne of Allah now, that's mean it is from one side of the earth and not always he is in the top of the earth. What side? To explain this story for you so you will not be confused. If we go in the hadith, uh, by the way, if you want to save this reference, the admin, he posted the link for you so you can save it about Allah will go and walk, and walk under the throne. Uh, if we go in the different hadith, we will find the following. Muhammad, he said, And remember, our question is still there. Uh, why it took Allah four days to create, six days to create the earth and the heaven? The earth, uh, sorry, the earth alone. Took him only two days to create the sky. How that can be true? Uh, let us see. Uh -huh. Okay. Let us see. All right. Read with me carefully. And this is Sahih. Muslim cannot say this is weak. Someone saying there is a possibility the earth is a flat and the earth, Allah throne, move like a satellite. Well, that will be true, uh, possible to say that. Uh, but uh, read with me this hadith and then that, that your question will not be valid no more. Muhammad here he said, Allah the Messenger said, PBUH, this is like kind of a chemical stuff for Muhammad. Our Lord Al Jabbar, not the blast, Al Jabbar, the superior, come every day, every night, down on the nearest heaven to us. When the last third of the night remain sane. So what we learn from this sentence? Allah, he come every night. Do you see it? Allah come every night. Okay. I will stop with this. When? In the third part of the night. He go where? To the lowest heaven. Let us go back to Google. And I will activate the sun shade. Here we go. So now, now it's a almost perfect time. Soon, the Muslims, Allah will come down to them. This is this is Mecca now. You see, Mecca is dark now. It's getting dark.
Allah will come in the third part of the night every day. <laughs> what time? In the third part of the night every day. He will come down. But as you know, the earth has many time zones, correct? That means Allah, He will never go up because the earth keeps moving and that time change. And But still it is going to be all over the place, which means always there is a third part of the night somewhere. Are you listening? If Allah come down every third part of the night, every day, that means Allah will not come down. That's a lie. For Allah have to stay because always there is a third part of the night somewhere. The only way for this is to be accurate if the earth is a flat then all the earth will have the same time because they will face the same sun. What do you say? <clears throat> we have Mr. Suhail, he's saying, Christian Prince is the biggest liar of uh, I, I ever seen. Okay. Still, you cannot prove me wrong. You cannot prove me liar. Here we go. Does your prophet say that Allah come in the third night every night? Does it say that? You can call me a liar, no problem. I will not call you names. Insult me, I will not insult you. But still, you have no answer. How Allah will come every third part of the night? Every night. That's impossible because simply, that means Allah will never go. That's, you know, if I go with Muhammad, based on what we have in this earth, your God Allah is like this now. He do this, go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down. I mean, what is this? This is what your God he do? All, every, all the whole 24 hours, Allah, he have nothing to do except going up and going down. Allah is going up, Allah is going down. Allah is going up, Allah is going down. Allah is going up, Allah is going down. Hey Allah, where are you going? Up. Allah, down. It's your prophet saying that, not me. So when you say I'm lying, you need to show, show how I'm lying. I, guys, did I show the hadith from Sahih Bukhari? Did I show the hadith from Sahih Bukhari? Did I show the Quran? The Quran itself saying that Allah created the earth in six days and then he created the sky, all of it in two days. So Allah took him to create the whole sky, the whole universe in two days, but yet it took him six days to finish the earth. Why? Which one is harder? So when you say, my friend, that I'm lying, you need to prove it. No problem. Feel free. Go ahead. Do your best. Additional to say you are a liar. That's the best you can do. Allah come down every night and by the way here we have another problem we did not mention it additional to this uh, timing thing anyone notice what is the problem now uh, okay hold on we have a Muslim here saying we like to share our friends the Muslims here we you know we love their okay, guys look at this this is what our friend his name uh, Elas this is his answer I like your answer, my friend. So what's wrong? Because now he confirmed to us that he is ignorant about timing. And he is claiming that the earth is a flat. In the same time, Allah confirmed that he can go inside his creation. Aren't you Muslim refuse to accept Jesus to be God because you heaven? he is going inside the heaven. And is the heaven created by Allah? The answer yes, according to Muslims. So Allah, he go inside his creation. So now Islam destroyed because you refuse to accept Allah going inside his creation and now you are saying to us Allah go inside his creation. So which one we will follow? Do Allah go inside his creation or not? 
Read the hadith carefully. And this is Sahih Bukhari. Hadith number 1145. Our Lord, the blessed, the superior, come every night down. Does it say, guys, down? Or I'm making things up? He come what? Down. Okay. To where? On the nearest heaven. Well, how many heaven there is? There is seven heavens. So let us go back to, might understand. We have seven heavens. Let us first zoom out a little bit. So people can see it better. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is tired really. I wasn't going really to go live on air, but I said I better serve, not to be lazy. Um, heaven number one, heaven number two, heaven number three, heaven number four, five, six, seven. Wonderful. In heaven number seven, who is there? Allah. Do we agree, Muslims? You say, sure, you yeah, agree. Okay. Muhammad said that Allah come down every night. Every what? Every night. From heaven number seven, all the way to the lowest heaven. So Allah going through heaven number six, heaven number five, number four, number three, number two, and now he stopped at heaven number one. Thank you. But that's mean Allah he is now inside his creation. And you Muslim reject Christ because you can you say God can <laughs> he created the body of a Christ how he will be inside the Christ you refuse the incarnation of God this is the whole idea of Islam and now you are saying to us that Allah is inside his creation who is the one who created the heaven Muslims you will say Allah okay now how Allah go inside his creation I'm waiting for the answer. What is the guy who says to me, you are lying? <clears throat> and please, if a Muslim, he insult me, don't insult him back. It's okay. You know, we love them and we, we trying to help them. Poor people. What do you think? Any Muslim? <clears throat> Allah go inside his creation. It's very simple. Huh? A Muslim now, he says, Allah can enter his creation. That's new. See, Islam is a changing now. Guys, listen to this. Our Muslim friend here, he just said, Allah can enter inside his creation. Where is, where, where, where is his statement? Let me see where he said that. The text is moving fast. I lost it. Here we go. Muhammad ibn Jaraz. Are you a Muslim, Muhammad? Or this is like a name. Are you a Muslim, my friend? Please, if you are not a Muslim, don't, don't use Muslim names. All right? Allah can enter a creation. Okay. So look, look at this now. How many Muslims agree that Islam teach that Allah can enter his creation? Give me a reference, Muhammad ibn Jaz, where it says that Allah can enter his creation. If Allah is inside his creation, that that's mean he is he is the creation. Now, okay, if Allah enter inside a man, who is that man? That man is Allah. Because who are you? So if God, if Allah can enter inside a man, that means that man is Allah. Who is the one speaking inside that man? Allah. Who is the one thinking? Allah. Who is the one talking? Allah. Who is the one moving? Allah. So now you just admitted that Islam is false religion because you rejected Jesus for saying that Jesus cannot be God for God is not a man.
Guys, isn't this what they say? Isn't this what the Muslim they say in all their articles that Allah is cannot be Jesus because Allah is not a man? And now they admit it because we got them here in the corner with this that Allah, yes, He can be inside a man. So now we get a Muslim who agreeing that his God can be a man. So it is possible that Jesus is God. Any Muslim? And again, all of this proving to us that Muhammad is ignorant in space, in science, and even logic. Because look what happened now. People, help me please. Why Allah he come down every night? What the hadith says, you remember the hadith was saying? Allah, he come down every night and he asked the Muhammadan, who is invoking me? Correct? Who is invoking me? So the superior will come every night down to the nearest heaven to us when the last third of the night remain and saying, if there is anyone to invoke me, Anyone notice what the big problem now? So what is the purpose? And then so that I may respond to his invocation? Question. If Allah is all powerful, why Allah he need to go down every night so he can hear your voice saying, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Can't he hear it from the seven heaven? The hadith is very clear. Allah, he come down to the nearest heaven and he say, who is invoking me? Can Allah say the same statement from the seven heaven? Or maybe his microphone is not reaching. Any Muhammad have an idea? during prayer but it doesn't mean that Allah is a creation this is not the question Allah is a creation or not this is not the question my friend uh, Mr. Muhammad Ahmad my friend listen carefully Allah he come down every night <clears throat> again I, I apologize for my voice this is what Mr. Muhammad saying during prayer but it doesn't mean uh, Allah is a creation. Okay, so Allah come down every day during the prayer, but doesn't mean he's a creation. But Allah is going inside as a creation. This is number one. Number two, can't Allah and who is all powerful, all knowing, know who is invoking him without this process of a traveling? Your God now became like a postman who 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 go to get the mail. He go to the mailbox. Every night in a certain part in the third part of the night, your God Allah He go down and He is now checking the mailbox. The hadith is very clear. And what he will check? Who is invoking me? Right? So the mailbox is obviously is in the first, the lowest heaven, this heaven. Allah cannot find out who is invoking him unless he go down from seven heaven to seven number one. If I ask you, Mr. Muhammad, and all the Muslims who are listening here, what is the purpose of this? Allah came down in the third part of the night. Either it's fabrication, it doesn't make sense, it's stupid, or it is true. What do you what do you think is true? Which one you accept? Is this is true? That Allah came in every day, going inside His creation. You know when we say Allah is inside His creation, that means His what? He is smaller than His creation, or Allah He can resize Himself. 
Is that correct? When we now accept that Allah go inside the heaven number five, the heaven number four, the number number six, etc. That's mean Allah is smaller than them. In order to go inside something, you have to be smaller than that thing. So if Allah has a chair is in the size of the heaven and the earth, as we showed you from the Quran, then how the one who is in that size, massive size, now going inside his creation, in order to do that, he resize himself. So what we learn from Muhammad now, that Allah is a sizable, he can he change his size. And actually, we can prove it even from more reference. Who remember Muhammad saying that in the judgment day, Allah will come to the Muslims and he will have, he will change his shape. You remember the hadith? Let us, let us look for it. I hope you people are taking notes. For what we say you know <clears throat> as you see i'm really i don't really feel too much good to go live on the air today but i said let us do what we need to do poor people deceived lied to uh, <clears throat> let us find the hadith All right. Read really carefully. And this is again Sahih al-Bukhari. You cannot say uh, this is uh, weak and uh, you know, the, they always execute some Muslim they give us falsely. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6573. And this is not only in one hadith. I mean, it's many. So Allah will come down to the Muslims in what? In a shape. Let us look for the word shape. Here we go. Read carefully. <clears throat> Allah will come to them in a shape other than they know and will say, I am your Lord. So what we confirm from this? Allah not only he resize himself, he changes his shape. Any Muslim want to say, I'm lying? Please say it. Who is the Muhammadan will say to me, I'm lying? Does it say in front of you, this is your Muslim website. This is your prophet speaking and this is your translation. I have nothing to do with it. This is sunnah.com website, as you see. So what we learn now? We learn that Allah... He go inside his heaven, and then in order to be fit inside the heaven, he have to be smaller than that, which means he resize himself. And not only that, that Allah, he changes his shape. So all the propaganda of Islam is destroyed. They say to us, Allah is glorious. Allah, nothing like him. Well, what do you mean nothing like him? No, 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 hold on. What do you mean like that? Okay, you see, the Bible says that sentence, by the way, that God, nothing like him. But it's not about a look. Because look mean no different. You see, I, I look like Jesus, but I cannot do what Jesus can do. This is what make Jesus not like me. I look like Jesus, but I'm a sinner. He is not. So, it is not about a look, it's about the quality, the power, the ability, the holiness. This is what makes God God. You see, we call him Almighty. What does that mean? He has a power nobody has. I am not Almighty, you are not Almighty. Neither he, neither she. So now what we learned, that your God Allah, 
he is not almighty proven from your prophet for he have to come every night to ask who is invoking me and Muhammad is not saying that metaphorically as you see he is describing even the, the timing he is describing uh, 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 what Allah will say he is saying Allah will come down so Allah is not almighty for he is not all knowledgeable he need to go down so he can hear you the Quran says that Jesus he can he can tell you what you hide in your houses what does that mean Jesus does not need to go to your house so he to find out what is in your house Jesus do not need to go and ask you what you hide for he knew what you hide which mean you cannot hide anything from him Hmm? Is that the Quran statement? And now you Muslim, you will say to me, this is by the leave of Allah, I laugh at that. Because how the one who made Jesus able to do this, he himself don't have it. Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? If Allah is the one who gave Jesus the ability to read your mind, to know what you are hiding, how Allah cannot read the mind and cannot hear the prayer unless he go down, Chapter 3, verse number 49. And I declare to you what you eat and what you store in your houses. Surely there is therein is a sign for you if you did believe. Muhammad Ahmad, he confirmed that you are suggesting the Muslim translation is wrong also. Okay. Well, what about you provide us with a true translation, Mr. Muhammad? Don't leave us in the limbo. <laughs> give us a translation. I will put, give me the correct translation. I will put it on the screen. Is that fair, guys? Mr. Muhammad, he agree with me. Here we go. Look at this. Guys, when I say to you, Muslim, they do not know what Islam is about. I'm, I'm not joking. Muhammad, he just said, Allah is a spirit. My friend, I'm so happy that you decide to leave Islam. No, Islam does not believe that Allah is a spirit. Always I notice when I debate Muslims, big or small, sheikh or what doesn't matter what their size, all of them, they are ignorant about the nature of their God. Allah is not a spirit. You can go right now and search in Google and you will find that not a single Muslim should believe that Allah is a spirit. This is against Islam. Search it. I can search it for you if you are lazy. So now what we confirm that when the Quran says that Allah, he gave miracle to Jesus and one of them to tell you what you hide, it cannot be true for Allah himself. He do not know what you hide. He have to come down every night and ask you, what are you saying? Are you invoking me? Additional to that, already we showed you that Allah, he think the earth is a flat. Allah, he think that the earth, the size of the earth and the heaven is the size of his chair which mean earth and heaven, both of them, they are the same size. You see, the Quran says that the throne of Allah, which is in the size of, of the heaven and the earth, is carried by eight. And the Muslim, they have their own interpretation for this. Some, they say they are eight angels, but they have four faces, each, or, each one of them. And the angels will be and on its side the side of what the side of the throne and they will carry the throne of Allah actually there's one story mentioned that when when the, the, the those eight they want to carry the throne of Allah they could not because it's very heavy makes sense so Allah he helped them to carry it 
Is that metaphorical? No. How we can find out if this is metaphorical or not? Give me a second. <clears throat> you see, we try to just put it in one topic, but it's hard to focus in one place without going to the other places. Let us see. Trying to find. I just took the screen from your face, so I don't. Uh, I'm going to scroll down. Uh, I don't want to hurt your eyes. <clears throat> Okay, read with me carefully. And for sure, this is Da'if, you know, just to let you know. Da'if, you know. Islam is Da'if. All right. <clears throat> above, above the seven heavens, there is a sea. Who's saying that? Muhammad. The Messenger of Allah looked at it and said, you look what? A cloud, the cloud passed by. I was sitting with the in the company of Muhammad, uh, and Allah Messenger was sitting. When a cloud he pa a cloud passed above them, Messenger of Allah look and he said, "What do you call this?" Muhammad is a astrology scientist. He cannot keep his mouth shut. He have to say something. They said Sahab. Sahab in Arabic means cloud. Muhammad he come with a new name. Scientific name Muhammad created just immediately. He said, This is Al Mazen. Uh -huh. Those guys they said Mazen. And then he said, And Anan. They said Anan. Like, what this guy is talking about? He's giving them names. It's a cloud walking in the, you know, he gave it, he gave the cloud a name. Suddenly the cloud have a name. Just, you know, because he's mentally ill, he's trying to make sure them that I know things you do not know. So he start he fabricate names. It's a cloud. What the Muslim and what Anan? And then he, they ask him. He asked, do you know the distance between the heaven and the earth? They replied, we do not know. For sure they do not know. This is the whole story here. Muhammad want to show off like I am Dr. Muhammad. Hello. <laughs> do you know? You don't know. And Muhammad, he loved it when they say to him, Allah and his messenger know best. The whole point of this is just to praise him. He said the distance between the, 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 uh, them is 71, 72, or 73 years. Look, Muhammad is being honest here. He's not sure. 71, 72, 73. I mean, Muhammad, Prophet, you are so honest, man. The distance between them is 71, 72, 73 years. I mean, Allah did not give you the exact number. Prophet Muhammad, do you want to call a friend to be sure which one of them? I mean, if I go to an exam and they will give you A, B, C, D, and now the answer is all of them. Which one of them is the day, is, is, the, is the distance? 71, 72, brother, maybe 73. I'm not sure. I forgot what Allah told me. True story. And then the heaven, the heaven which is above it, is similar distance. Okay, so seven heavens, each one of them, the distance is seven, 71, 72, 73. Hmm? And then after all of this, uh, in the seventh heaven, there is a sea. <laughs> and I will tell you why Muhammad he says that. The distance between those surface and the bottom is like between one and the heaven and the next. And above there, there is eight mountain goats. There's what? Eight mountain goats. Okay, what those eight mountain goats doing? The distance between their hooves 
and inches is like the distance between the heaven and the next. Like, look at this. Do you see how big those hooves? I mean, come on, they are going to carry Allah. They have to be big. Hello? And the, so the distance between their hooves and their hunches is like the distance between the heaven and the next. Then Allah, the plus the exalted, is above that. <laughs> You're lying, CP. It doesn't say that, CP. And by the way, they say this is da'if. Anything embarrassing, stupid, they will say is da'if. But the funny is, even those who they are not da'if are embarrassing. But now, why Muhammad, he said there is a sea in the seventh heaven? Do you remember a Muslim who wanted to uh, get, a, 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 get a, a guy busted, supposedly lying about Islam? He says to him, <laughs> You <laughs> maybe you do not know that uh, uh, the throne of Allah is not above the water. Do you remember the guy who said that? The idiot? Because there's a hadith says that the sun goes every day and prostrate itself under the throne of Allah, and the Quran says. The sun set in murky water. Muhammad he asked one of his followers, <clears throat> Where the sun goes? The guy he says, Allah and his knows, uh, Allah and his uh, prophet knows best. Right. Uh, okay, Mr. Wid, the chick, uh, Mr. Wid, he gave us a scientific fact. Are you almost there, Mr. Wid? Boys? I took a selfie for it, so later we can talk about it. Just to your request, are you almost there, my friend? The one who called himself with, with them, boys? Are you almost there? So where the sun goes, Muhammad, he answer, the guy, he says to him, Allah and his prophet knows best as usual. He said, go and prostrate itself under the throne. Now, who is the one who asked me about the orbit? Who of you said to me, the Quran speak about orbit? This is the orbit verse. Do you see what the orbit is? Stupid orbit. The orbit in the Quran, which Muslim they claim it's about science, it's about the sun every day. Go and prostrate itself under the throne of Allah and ask Allah permission to come back. And who is the one saying that? Muhammad. And that is the degree of Allah the Almighty saying, chapter 36, verse number 38. Do you see it? والشمس تجري لي مستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم We go to the Quran الشمس تجري لي مستقر لها So they try to fool you about the orbit but Muhammad he got them busted Chapter 36 verse number 38 and the sun runs his course for a period of determined determined for him. The Muslim they made an article about this. Science, Allahu Akbar. Yeah, hold on. This is the science. You're a prophet claiming that the sun goes every day. When the sun goes nowhere, that's a lie. Do the sunset appearance is about the sun going anywhere? And the funny, the Muslim who is trying to get the other uh, uh, atheist busted, he agreed with this hadith. He said, this is the true hadith. So he agreed that he's a prophet, is a fraud, because the sun goes nowhere. Do you see the orbit? So the orbit, the Muslim, they try to make articles about it. It's not only a fraud, it's a lie. It's a proven to be stupid, proven to us that the one who made the Quran, we ignorant.
Why we have only we have less than 900 today? What happened? Maybe I should not come every day. You guys are bored. Hmm? You are not inviting your friends. Okay, we will change the topic so more people will come and they will listen to us. One of the beautiful things about Allah that He promised us in heaven that we will have a pillow. I think all of you will like this topic. And now, not only you will feel sleepy and go sleep and snore, you will remember your pillow. I mean, Allah is so beautiful to the point He think about you that Allah, He will give you pillow. Hmm. I mean, what a human being, he need more than a pillow. Huh? What do you need more? Be honest with me. <clears throat> Just for uh, a break. <clears throat> For those who are asleep, here we go. We give you something as a break from science. Allah in the heaven of Allah he will give you two spring of water I asked myself why two spring why two spring why two spring I could not get an answer first I thought maybe one is cold and one is hot hmm. maybe one is boiling so I can make tea and the other one is mm, no later I found out that uh, there is two spring of water you drink from them one will keep you youth as I mean young in the age of 33 the age of Jesus and the other one you drink from it will make you white one will keep you alive the fountain of youth and one will keep you white because according to Islam Islam is a supremacist a white supremacist cult Allah will make all those who they are Muslims white and all those are not Muslims black and then in which of the favor of your Lord you will deny? Actually, if you search this sentence in the in the in this chapter, you will find that this guy is making a stupid rabbi music, repeating the same sentence over and over and over. There's no way God is speaking like this. What is this? What is that? Is he out of words? What is this? Silly, stupid. He, he have nothing to say. However, in chapter 55, verse number 33, it says, O ye assembly of jinn and men, if it be you can pass beyond the zone of the earth and the heaven, pass ye not without authority shall you be able to pass. So Allah, he made a challenge to mankind and genie to go out of the earth. And the only one, if we go and read about this, you will see that the one who have authority to go is the angels and the prophet of Allah. Only. We can go and read the interpretation. So, Muhammad, he made a challenge. He never thought that the time will come and a human being will go to the space. Claiming that Allah, he challenged mankind and genie to go out of the earth. But isn't it already people are out of the space? So the challenge is false and Allah is a false. And if you try to go out of the zone of the earth, Allah will, will burn your ass. Excuse my language. Read it. On you will be sent, O oh, you evil ones, uh, twins, twin, a flame of fire to burn and a smoke to shock no defense you will have you see it 
So if you try to go out of the earth, Allah will shoot you with the star. In different, different verse in the Quran it says, and Allah, he made the stars as missiles to those who try to go and steal information from Allah or to go to the heaven. Read in Arabic? Okay, so what? Do you know Arabic? Guys, read in Arabic. يُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمَا شَوَاظٌ مِنْ نَارٍ وَنُحَاسٌ فَلَا تَنْتَصِرُونَ What that will make a difference for you? I mean, supposedly now it's became solved, the problem solved. يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ إِنِ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ أَنْ تَنْفُذُوا مِنْ أَقْطَارِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَنِفُذُوا لَا تَنْفُذُونَ إِلَّا بِسُلْطَانِ Allah making a challenge. So look, wherever we go, Allah in the corner. Remember, our major question for today, for this program today, is what? How come Allah, He created the earth in four in six days? Two days to create the earth, four days to create the substance in the top of the earth, and took Him two days to create all the stars and the galaxies. Not one star. All the heaven, Allah, He made them seven heavens, and He created the stars and all the galaxies in two days. How in the world does God, He is considering that it took Him time to create the earth and whatever in the top of the earth more than the time it took Him to create whatever in the space? Which one is bigger? This is our major question for today. The rest is just, uh, let us say, there are pillows in the couch. All of them, they lead to one, you know, reasoning that Islam is a fraud. Who agree with this? Who agree? And the funny, the Muslims, they made articles saying that Allah, he speak about the atmosphere Allah speak about the atmosphere yes brother where now hold on we have a Muslim who said he, he wanna he want us to see scientific fact we did not cover that so let us go back to the selfie we took the snapshot I mean <coughs> what he said all right I will open his request to see what he is claiming. <coughs> he said in chapter 24, verse number 40, there is a scientific miracle fact. Okay, I will go and see. All right. This is Mr. Wid in boys. He said, check chapter 24 verse number 40 scientific miracle and fact okay so you are saying to me this one is a scientific miracle the rest of the quran is a garbage because look what you happened you did not answer anything i showed you until now and if one of those are true that's mean allah is a fraud because if the quran is the book of allah we should not the quran itself says oh the the screen is not up hold on sorry Let us put it on the screen again. I apologize. This is what our friend with a boy, uh, boys, with him boys, he said. Check Surah 24, verse number 40, scientific miracle and fact. So all the mistakes we just showed you, and no Muslim can answer them. And now you are saying to me, check this fact. Okay, let me, I, 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 let us say I am God now. Hmm? I will make one million stupid mistake and one of them come to be true and that will make me God however even this one is stupid let us go for it it's mentioned the darkness of the deep sea okay let us see we will we will love together 
Uh, my friend, anyone, anyone who swim, he knew the more you go dive, the more you go dark. I mean, you do need to be a genius. Secondly, if we go and read the interpretation, we will die laughing. Because simply, here Allah is speaking about the judgment day. And saying in the judgment day, if you look at your hand, you cannot see it. Right? This is about judgment day. This is not about, about the sea. So it's the likeness of a sea. You go down, there is waves in the top of waves in the top of waves. Right? But this is the sea. The sea one is the sea is a crazy. The water is not a clear and go dark. When the sea waves are calm, you can see down to the rocks. It's not a science, it's not a big deal. Actually, even in the beach, if you are just one foot from the beach, if there's waves coming, you can see nothing. Okay, you are saying I'm a liar. Guys, shall we go and read the interpretation? Is that fair? Let us open the interpretation. Hold on. Because now you will say the interpretation are liars too. Huh? Obviously. <clears throat> this is what Muslims do, you know. This is about judgment day. This is not about the sea. <clears throat> All right. Let us open the interpretation. Okay. <sighs> Actually, he was caught in twenty four, twenty four, uh, thirty nine. Hold on. Let me be sure. Uh, for uh, forty, sorry, forty. Okay. Yeah, 40. Let us go to 40. And let us read the interpretation together. <coughs> read it, my friend. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. I will zoom out so you can see the whole thing. This is your Islamic interpretation. I have nothing to do with it. All right. Or it is those who disbelieve their evil deeds are as manifold darkness on a deep sea, covered by a pillow above which the, which is that is above, which is be, below. There is another uh, 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 below, and above which second below, which are a cloud, and those are being the manifold liars of darkness. Okay, so when there is a cloud. There's waves, and there's a cloud, and there's a storm. You cannot see the darkness of the sea. Do you see it? Does it say cloud? And here, by the way, it says below there's a cloud. <laughs> so which sea is talking about? Below the sea, there's a cloud? Because remember, it says there's waves in the top of waves, in the top of it, there is a cloud. Okay, is the cloud in the top of the sea or the cloud is under the sea? If the cloud in the top of the sea, that explains why there's a cloud, why it's dark. Because there's a cloud, there's a storm, and you cannot see down in the sea. Where is the miracle here? Where is the miracle? Is that like... A genius to know that when you go down in the water and you have a cloud and you have a storm, the water is dark. It says that in front of you. Same time, as long as you are talking about this, okay, let us see the, the science, no problem. Or your science is uh, uh, only about this. Let us confirm how Muhammad, he considered the sea and the ocean and etc. Let's see. If we go in the Quran, 
and see chapter Qaf. Or let us say go to Al-Qalam, sorry. Everybody will be laughing at you in a second. In a second. And then what you will say? You will say the Quran doesn't say that? You cannot say. It's not up to you. Hold on. This is Al-Falaq. We want Al-Qalam. <coughs> All right. Al-Alaq, sorry. This is your science. Trade with me and love. <clears throat> uh, now let us go on to this one. This one is more clear. Because, you know, either Allah is a scientist or Allah is an idiot. It's not opening the site froze hold on I click at the link it's not going all right now it's opening let us read together and everybody in a second the Muslim he will not like to hear the Quran he don't like to see the Quran he don't want to read anything about the Quran and he will say I don't believe in this hmm. chapter 68 verse number one and this is Ibn Abbas the one was chosen by your prophet to explain the Quran so don't tell me Muhammad your prophet he made a wrong choice in his narration of the authority of Ibn Abbas that he said regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon he says Allah swear by noon, which is the whale that carry the earth on its back, while in the water and beneath which is the bowl, and under the bowl there's a rock, and under the rock there's a dust, and none knows under the dust save Allah. Where is the guy who speak about science? Is that the knowledge of your God? He knew about the sea and what is inside the sea. Here we go. We found that there's inside the sea, there's a whale. His name is Noon. And Mr. Noon, he is the one who carried the earth in the top of its back. And Mr. Noon, the whale, is carried by a bowl. And not only that, even we have the name of the, the, the whale. The name of the whale is Lewish, not Lewish Farrakhan, different Lewish. And he said its name is that Lotia, and the name of the bowl is Bahamut. So this is your God who know what is inside the ocean? And now what you will say, I am the one fabricating this, right? Here we go. This is the official government of the Kingdom of Jordan. This website is owned by the King of Jordan himself. <clears throat> Tafsir Ibn Abbas, translation, uh, Mokrain Kazuzu. Uh, Royal of Ahlul Bayt Institute of Islamic Thought, Amman, Jordan. This is the knowledge of the sea. That's a lot of knowledge. What happened to the guy who was speaking about the knowledge? <clears throat> and not only that, the story did not stop. I mean, things go more crazy. And the sea called Adwat. And it's like a small ball in a huge sea. And the sea is Hollywood rock, whereby there is 4,000 cracks. You know, either the Quran ought to be true, the rest are a fraud. That's me, Allah is a fraud, doesn't matter. Correct? When Allah, he changed a human being and the genie to go out of the earth. And then a human being go out of the earth. Allah, he claimed that if you try to go out of the zone of the earth, Allah will shoot your ass by a star. It 
So how they read it, chapter 67, verse number 5. And you can read any interpretation you want. Choose one, I will read it for you on the screen. So now what you will say? You will say all Muslim interpretation is a lie? Okay, what about the Quran? And we decorated the lowest heaven with lamps. So according to the Quran, only the lowest heaven there is lamps. As what? As decoration, which is stupid because the majority of, of lights or let's say stars, we don't see. So if the purpose of creating the, 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 the stars to be lamps as decoration, because here it says adorned, adorned. It's only in the lowest heaven. And what is the purpose of those lamps? What they do? Allah, he used them as missiles to drive what? To drive shaitan. So shaitan, when he tried to go to heaven, Allah, he shoot him. That is science, my friend. Are you there? Do you really believe that shaitan, Allah will shoot him with a star? How big is this shaitan? According to your prophet, shaitan, he sleep on your nose. He piss in your ears. He jump your, in your mouth when he is young. And by the way, this is science. Allahu yuhibbu al-attasin. Allah, he like those who sneeze. So now Allah in the time of Corona is very happy. Science. Science. Allah even explained to us where is sneezing coming from. Sneezing come from Allah. Yawning come from shaitan. This is science. That Allah Messenger said, and is that is that Sahih or Daif? This is that Sahih. Al Bukhari. Allah loves sneezing but dislike yawning. Hachu! Hachu! Allah like <laughs> yeah, do it more. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> more please. <laughs> Do it more, please, Christian Prince. Please, please, please. It's tickling. I love it. I love it. You want to make Allah upset? Let us start yawning. <sighs> yeah. huh? So now, sneezing is from Allah. Yawning is from Shaitan. And that is science. Where is your science? Either you have to agree that Muhammad is saying the truth, and as you see, this is Sahir Bukhari. What you will say, this is we don't accept it, this, this is authentic. This is science. And actually, Muhammad he made it clear <clears throat> that when you open your mouth and you do Yani Shaitan, he jump in your opening. He jump inside your mouth. Read it, my friend. Is that Sahih? Yes, it's Sahih. Read carefully. The Messenger of Allah said, The sneeze is from, the, from Allah and the yawn is from Shaitan. So when one of you yawn, let him cover his mouth. The Muslim, they made an article about the hygiene of the Prophet. Do you know that the Prophet, he ordered us to put our hand over our mouth? Really, brother? Yes, to stop Corona, brother. But the liars, they will not show you the rest of the Hadith. So they say to you, they stop here. If one of you do yawn, he have to cover his mouth with his hand. Stop. Don't show the rest of the hadith. Because if you show the rest of the hadith, people will die laughing. So what we do? We cover the hadith the same as we cover our mouth. So all the rest of the hadith here, is gone in the article. Allah Prophet, brother, he taught us, brother, to cover our mouth, brother, when we open our mouth, brother. And why, brother? Because that will bring uh, germs, brother. Because this is what your Prophet saying. Your Prophet claiming that sneezing is from Allah, and but sneezing make more bacteria out. Correct? Sneezing can take way more germs out because there's an, there's a power when you when you yawn, you are not really pushing too much. You might have some your water come from your mouth. But when you sneeze, for sure water will come out. So Muhammad he ordered you to cover only when you, you when you do yawning, not when you sneeze. And why? What is the scientific reason behind it, brother? Because yawning is 
from shaitan and shaitan he make you yawn so he can jump indeed shaitan love from inside his opening so the second you start yawning according to muhammad shaitan right away he jump inside your mouth and he's like, like ha, 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 God, I'm crying. <laughs> very, very funny. I'm inside his mouth now. <laughs> That's your prophet. That is science, my friend. So either you Muslims, you agree that Muhammad is a scientist or you have to agree is a fraud. According to science, yawning is from shaitan. Or yanin, that is a signal from your body. Your body have a sensor. God is amazing. So your God, he sensor you, telling you you are tired, you are sleepy. Go sleep. That is not from shaitan. Any Muslim have an answer? Huh? Science. Again, our question today was why Allah took him four days, six days to create the earth, yet it took him two days to create all the heaven with, with massive size of galaxies. That is a clear evidence that the one who made those verses, he do not know that the space is way bigger. Why nobody is calling you no more? I, I, am, I am not in Skype, my friend. Actually, I wasn't planning to go live on air today. As you see, my voice is tired. <clears throat> my Skype is not open yet. I did not, I'm not planning to open it today. So, uh, and actually, even if you open it, we got who is going to call. There's a guy, his name, Ultimate Fart. He is the only one is calling. The rest of the Muslims are scared. Bring me a Muslim. We claim to have a knowledge and we will be happy to have him bring me a shake but what we have is just kids who have no idea what they are talking about look look at the chat a muslim he said to us allah is a spirit the other muslim he says to us uh, uh, allah can be inside the creation all of this is against islam they don't know what they are talking about <coughs> So, it took Allah six days to create the earth and the grass and the trees, and took him two days only to create this massive space. And what make it, I mean, more funny, as an example, you see, like we have many things to talk about science here, but just to give you an example, how Allah, he explained to us that the sky is up. Anyone knows? Why the sky is up? The science of Allah. Why the, why the birds are up? You will die laughing if you know the reasoning. Chapter 16, verse number 79. Why the birds are in the heaven, they are not falling down. Allah is holding them. Allah is holding them. I know what happened this. All right. <clears throat> Let us see. Chapter 16, verse number 79. Don't you see the bird? Hill the flying in the midst of the sky. None is holding them but Allah. This is how the Muslims explain. And look. Between two brackets, they say none gave them the ability to fly, but Allah, that's a lie. It doesn't say that. It says he is holding them from failing, you liar. 
What about the earth? So F-16, Allah gave her ability to fly. Who is holding F-16 from falling down? Allah, he hold it. If you change the translator, you will see how the translation change. For they are liars. No dignity in the translation. Haven't you seen the birds obedient in the, in the mid of the air? None hold them save Allah. Even this translation is not true. Let us go to the different verse. What about the sky? Who is holding the sky from falling us? Chapter 22, verse number 65. See, see that Allah subjected you mankind, all that in earth and ships sail through the sea by his command. He would hold the heaven from falling in the earth. But we are inside the heaven. People, aren't we inside the heaven? So what do you mean he's holding the heaven from fire on us? So Muhammad, in different verse in the Quran, he says, he made the sky as a roof. So now we have a roof. And that roof, Allah, he lifted it up. And actually, this is confirmed in that verse in the Quran. But we will try not to cover all of them in just one because that will make it too much information. Already we have too many information. So Allah is holding the sky from falling down on us. Is that true? What, what, what the sky will fall down on us? How this can be true? We are inside the sky. We are not outside of the sky. We are a little tiny piece of dust inside this huge space. So what do you mean Allah is holding the sky from falling us? Is the sky an object? When we say heaven, is that an object? The heaven have many objects. The sky fell on us. We are inside the sky. The whole earth is inside the sky. The whole earth is the same as like little germ inside the bloodstream. like a bacteria inside your blood, even smaller than that, way smaller. So the more we read about Muhammad and his, sta his you know, statements, we die laughing. Do we have any Muslim objection? Any objection? Anyone? According to Kushati, Saitun, the throne from heaven because he went to become God himself. So, Daniel and No, the Muslims don't believe, my friend. The Muslims don't believe that uh, Satan was an angel. Satan for Muslims is a genie. And he had never been an angel. Satan, simply, he is a one who refused to bow down to Adam because the angels accuse Adam to do mischief, which means the story is stupid. You see, how many times you heard the Muslims saying that you should not pay for the sin of somebody else. They say that to you, right? And then we find later in the hadith says that Allah, he will bring the Muslims and they have sin like mountains and then he will take the sin of the Muslims, he places it in the Christian and the Jews. However, when Allah, he ordered the angels to bow down, the angels, they, did, they, they bow down except shaitan. But this is stupid. Shaitan is not one of the angels and he did not accuse Adam of anything. So why you are ordering him to bow down? <laughs> it's like saying the cats accuse Mr. Dog 
that he will eat their bones. And then Allah, he says to them, no, he will not eat your bones. And then he proved it to them, supposedly in a funny story. And then Allah, he says, all cats say meow, except Mr. Dog, he say ow. So Allah, he decided to cast out shaitan from heaven, but he is not a cat, man. Allah, he ordered the angels to bow down. وَإِذَا قَالَ اللَّهُ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِسْرُجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ The one who made this verse is officially stupid. Allah, he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam, but shaitan is not an angel. Except Iblis. I mean, how you say except Iblis? It's like, it's like saying, Allah, he ordered all the chicken to say, bak, 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 except the donkey, he did not say, bak, 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 but he's a donkey. He is not one of the angels. Right? Uh, my my friend, when you say in the in the Bible we have in the Bible there's many things it's metaphorical and there's many things it is uh, uh, literally. So don't mix between what is metaphorical and what is literally. Like as an example, when God he says let be light and light was that is not metaphorical. But if I meditate and I say uh, uh, God is uh, his stars um, moving or coming or etc. Or like there is many statement of phrase of a speech. As an example, the Bible says the four corners of the earth, but there is no four corners of the earth. But this is a figure of speech. So don't mix things. Don't mix what if you want to read what the Bible says. Go and read the interpretation. If the interpretation saying that this is literally happened, then it is literally happened. If it's metaphorical, it's a metaphorical. And we do the same with the Muslims. When we show something, we show their interpretation, not ours. If they say this is metaphorical, then we have to go and say, okay, this is metaphorical. But not a kid in YouTube saying this is metaphorical. Muslims, they have bigger problem from anyone else. They have their prophet who made a statement. So they cannot get and jump over it. As an example, when we say to the Muslims, the Quran say the sun set in the murky water. What the Muslim they say? Huh? They say this is how it appeared to Alexander the Great. Correct? In order to explain the stupidity of the Quran, to defend it, they fabricate and they say, this is how it's appeared to this guy. No, it doesn't say that. Allah is saying, I will tell you, they are asking about the Quran. I will tell you some of his account. Who is talking Allah, not the Zulqarnayn? Verily we established for him in earth, and we gave him means of everything. And then so he fell away. Until when he reached the sitting place of the sun, he reached what? The sitting place of the sun. Who is talking Allah? The Muslims, in order to cover this, where it says, and he found it sitting in a spring of muddy water, they say, no, 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 no. This is the guy. The guy he thought... He thought he saw the sun sitting in the ocean, so he thought it's uh, sat in the ocean. But as you see, my friend, the word in the Quran did not even use as ocean. It's a spring of a black muddy water. Spring. Do you see ocean there? Why? Because there's legions believe that the sun go in that spring, and this is where it get their spring boiling spring. So the sun get colder at night. Go to that spring, take a shower with the boiling water, and then get the heat and go back up. So Muhammad, the Muslim here, they try their best to make articles saying, no, Allah did not mean that. There's no way, brother. Then we go to the hadith and we find Muhammad getting them busted. So now what they will do with Muhammad? They will say he's a liar too? They will say Muhammad don't understand the Quran? I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah, S-A-W-S-F-M-A-M station, who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. He asked, do you know where this is set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. 
He said it's set in a spring of warm water. Do you see it? Do you see it? So what they will say now? They will say, the prophet was wrong. They will say the prophet, he got the interpretation for the verse wrong. So they hide those stories from you and they will not show it to you and they will make all the fabrication explaining the Quran as they wish. <clears throat> all right. But it's clear. It's a fake hadith. Who is the one who fake hadith? Here we go. It says Sahih chain. Everything there is accurate, perfectly accurate. Do you see it? It says Sahih in chain. Everything is perfect. Since when it is not Sahih? This is their website. And they are the one who add those words there, not me. We wouldn't want to change the topic to talk about Tawheed. I, you answer Muhammad you answer what what you say that Muhammad give me your answer what answer do the sun set in murky water or not do you agree with your prophet that the sun set in murky water or your prophet is wrong and you understand the Quran better hmm are you saying that your prophet is lying Uh, no, uh, ultimate fart, he don't follow the Quran only. That's a lie. Ultimate fart, he follow nothing. He claimed that no one understand the Quran except him. And you are the only one who speak about yourself. Ultimate fart. When somebody says that he is the one, he have the only understanding for the Quran and all the scholars are wrong. I have no time for such a kid because he will give me any answer he wants. Who care? We are debating Islam, not debating ultimate fart. Islam is not what he say. If somebody want to say, I am the only one who knows the interpretation for those verses, the scholars are a fraud, the hadith is a fraud, all the Arab are a fraud, and he is from Senegal who do not know how to read the Quran, and even he says to me, you do not need to know Arabic to understand the Quran. So how do you know the Quran then? In your Senegal language? So we don't waste time with kids. This is kids. This guy is have mental issue, obviously. In the top of that, we gave him a thousand chance to call and we spoke to him and the videos all over. Go and watch them and die laughing. Don't waste our time. We are debating Islam, not a fabrication of your own. You see, if somebody want to give me anything we give him, we give, we, he throw at us any answer he want. Then we are not debating religion, we are debating him, him himself. He is the prophet, he is God, he is Muhammad himself. He have answer which nobody heard of before. So obviously he is suffering from mental issue. And look, he keep coming, the same guy. The same guy, mental issue. We don't debate kids. Already we did actually, we, we got you busted. Do you want me to play for you what you said to me? That you do not you, uh, you do not need to read Arabic. Allah will explain to you the Quran. If you are a believer, Allah will explain the Quran for you. Okay, is it Ibn Kathir a believer? Is it a Jalalin a believer? Is it a Qurtubi a believer? So how come they do not know and you don't agree with them? You see how stupid you are? Allah, Allah will explain the Quran only to believers. So all those Muslims in the world, they aren't believers and you are the only believer from Senegal. Mental issue. <clears throat> anyway just ignore this big kid he's just looking for uh, uh, you know I don't know he's desperate looking for attention right and by the way we have all the videos of this guy if you like to have a comedy go and watch it and die laughing And actually, all of them, you see, 
anyone you want to debate, if you want to debate anyone, first of all, you have to debate him about the, uh, the religion. Not somebody coming to you, like, just, just to show you how, how those liars, they work. You remember when David Wood debated with the Mimi Hijab? David Wood, he says to him, your God have physical part. Mimi Hijab, he says, who said so? That's it. He denied it. But all the Muslim Sunni, and he's a Muslim Sunni, believe Allah have a physical part. If we go right now to YouTube and we search Allah have a hand, you will find tons of videos of Muslim explain Allah hands. Allah have a foot, Allah have a shin, Allah have a nose, Allah have an eyes, Allah have fingers. None of them deny it, but in the debate he deny. Those kind of people, you will not debate them because you cannot debate a liar. He deny anything unless you are willing to spank him in the spot. You are willing to say to him, you lied. If you are gentle and you will say, okay, let it go. You know, we don't want to make a fight over it. He lied. No, that doesn't work this way. You should get him busted immediately. It is your prophet who says so. It's not the scholars only because the scholars, they say what your prophet said. Did your prophet say, liar, Mimi Hijab, that Allah will put his foot in hellfire? And all the Muslim Sunni scholars accept that this is a physical foot? Who said so? Isn't it the Quran says Allah have a shin and he will expose his shin? Isn't it the Hadith says that Allah will come to you in a shape other than the one they saw him first time? Is your prophet lying? Is that your prophet saying that or not? Huh? Who said so? Who said so? Your prophet says so. So those liars, there's one of two choices to deal with them. Either you have to be aggressive with them, spank them, expose them, and burn their paper. Throw them in the throw them in the sewage. That's it. There's, don't waste your time with them. We get them busted once, that's it. Or you are just looking to waste your time. Who is talking here? Muhammad. What he's saying? Allah will come to you in a shape other than the one they know. Shape. Allah will change his shape. Do you see it? They say no. No, nowhere it says that. It's in front. This is Sahih. This is Al-Bukhari. So when you speak to someone like this kid from Senegal, he says to you right away, I don't accept the hadith. Why? Because the hadith of his prophet get him busted. And then what do you accept? I don't accept the scholars. Okay, so now we throw all of Islam away. The statement of Muhammad is in the garbage. The statement of the scholars are in the garbage. And he is the one who is God now. He is Allah, who will explain to us what Allah said. Nobody in the world understand the Quran except him. That's it. He's God. Don't waste your time with such an idiot. You see, when I prove you wrong, when I prove you wrong, I don't read my own statement. I show you what your prophet said. To confirm that, we go to the Hadith. To confirm what the Hadith is saying, that this is what it's meant, we try to go and see what the scholar they said. So the second a Muslim, he didn't want to accept any of those. It's a clear sign that he is desperate. He is bankrupt. Ask yourself, why in the world somebody will reject his prophet teaching? Isn't this your prophet teaching? Yes, it is. Why you don't want it? Because he's ashamed of it. As simple as that. He agree. He's a prophet. is crazy. So in order to escape getting busted we say I don't agree with this I don't agree with that I will give you my own answer keep your answer for yourself we are debating those who they are called Sunni or those who call Shia if you have a new sect for yourself and create your own religion go play away with the kids in the street
Actually, <clears throat> I have a I have a UBS guy. Uh, he's a Muslim. He delivers something to me, you know. And he said, "Yeah, you have an accent. You know, where are you from?" I said, "I'm an Arab." He said, "Mashallah." To which mosque you go to? I said, "I don't go to a mosque. I'm a Christian." I said, "Really? There's Arab Christian?" I said, "Yeah, there's a lot of Arab Christians." Anyway, we start talking. He's a nice guy. He said, I cannot talk to you now. I have to go. But uh, uh, Allah is willing. I will stop by. You know, he stopped by. The guy, he entered, speaking to me. We sit outside, inside my house. He come to me as a UBS Muslim. He left as a UBS Christian. For he was honest. Everything I showed him is with a clear proof. He could not believe it. The Quran says that. The Hadith says that. The Prophet says that. The guy, he is like never heard of this before. And I show him, as you see, this is your Islam, Islamic website. This is not me, you just read it. Poor guy, you know, he said, uh, you know, I, uh, I was praying for all those years for nothing. He was really sad, actually, you know, it was like, he felt like he's a, he was a fool. Literally. I told him, it's okay, I mean, you see, all of us can be mis deceived and mislead, and we do sin, all of us, we do wrong. But God, he always, he opened doors for us. Just the, the, the Lord, he says, knock at my door, I will open for you. Who said I am, who said that I am now better than you? I am not. All of us, we do sin. And sin is sin. You worship the wrong God. You know, you believe that, I mean, who in the world want to believe that a stone forgives sin? Who believe that there is, if you hold a stone with your hand, and you kiss it and you cry next to it, Allah will erase your sin. Unless you are a pagan. When I told him about the, the breastfeeding for adult, the guy, he went not. He said, that is not acceptable. He said, so what? How we come we cannot find it? I said, this is another problem here. How we cannot find it? That the Muslim, they claim that because there is a goat who ate the Quran. Can you believe that there is a God and he is a holy God? He made order that women, she have to give her breast to a stranger 10 times. And then he abrogated that verse by five times. And now we cannot find neither the five time, neither the ten time. Where is the verse of five time breastfeeding for adult in the Quran? We cannot find it. Okay, where is the verse of ten time? We cannot find it. What kind of God he do that? And what is the difference between five time breastfeeding and ten time? What have, why Allah he made it ten time in the beginning and then he changed his mind make it five? What, dif what difference is going to make? What about make it once? Half once? So five times now, it was ten times before. What the difference between five times and ten times breastfeeding for adult? And how in the world a woman she will give her breast to an adult? And what that will do? Is that going to stop a sexual desire of a man? I never heard of such a garbage man. He will go crazy if you give, if a woman she gave him her in her, her, her boobs. That can't be from God. That will not stop a sexual desire, and especially this woman, she don't even have milk. I mean, what is going to suckle what? Do you think women breast is like a faucet? They have milk all the time. And then Aisha, uh, 
she ordered her nieces to suckle anyone when it enter upon her. Anyone want to see Aisha, you have to go to her nieces, and her nieces, they give you their breast, and you suckle them ten times, and then you can go and see Aisha. So imagine the office of Mrs. Aisha. She have her nieces in the secretary, and their breast is in the table, and when they got in, they want to see Aisha. They have to suckle ten different times in ten different days until they are satisfied. It's not like you put your lips in the lips and the, and the, and the nipples and they are done. No, you have to do it until you are satisfied. Mushbi'at. So anyone want to enter upon Aisha have to suckle her the breast of her nieces. Look at this. Aisha Umm al she sent this guy, he want to see her. She told him, you cannot see me unless you go first and suckle ten times. So she sent him away while he was being nursed to her sister Umm Kathum. And she said, suckle him ten times so that he can come and see me. So now if you want to go and visit any of those, the, the one who claim to be scholars or sheikhs or whatever, even YouTubers, the, those bunch of kids, Mimi and Zizi and Susu, in order to see their wife, if you are a Muslim, you have to suckle her, his wife breast in time. And look what happened here, we have a problem. Um Kathum, she nursed me three times only, and then I fell ill. So that's the only reason uh, 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 she only nursed me three times, so I could not go and see Aisha. Look at this problem. Only three times, brother. I, don't need, I did not meet the requirement for meeting Aisha. And what is the requirement? To suckle the boobs of Um Kathum three, uh, 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 ten times. This is religion. Be honest with yourself. If you are a Muslim, if you are a Christian, you are a Hindu, you are a Jew, I don't care what you are. This is from God. God, he says, if a man, he want to see a woman, he have to suckle her. I mean, how I have to suckle her, but I cannot see her. I mean, this is even stupid. And by the way, they say to you, oh, she take milk and she put it in her in a cup. That's a lie. It says, suckling. فَأَرْضَعَتْنِي أَرَضَعَتْنِي رَضَّة رِضَاعَة رَضَعَة is a word coming from you holding something with your teeth, your lips, and you bite in it, you squeeze in it. It's not a drinking milk. And women are not goats. And Aisha, she don't have milk anyway. She never have kids. You see, women, they have milk only if they have a baby. Like, do you think women, they have like a, a tank of milk? And any time you open the faucet, there is milk there? Obviously, this man, Muhammad, who came with the solution, is mentally ill. He's making fun of those people. This is going to be from God. And you know how Islam forbid adoption and then you say go and do this what this will do is that adoption they will say no okay after I suckle from Aisha am I allowed to have to even marry Aisha for sure Aisha because she is the mother of the Muslims supposedly the Quran make a verse says you cannot marry the wives of Muhammad to prove that Muhammad is a fraud because why a widow she cannot marry after him because he own her she is a property but a Muslim normal Muslim woman if I suckle from her breast, and is that going to stop me? Am I allowed to have her as a wife after that? Yes. Unless you suckle as if you are a baby, according to Islam. 
So if you suck her from a woman and you are a man, still you can have sex with her. So what the point? Still she is lawful for you. Stupidity. That is literally stupidity. Again, we go back to zero. The question was from the beginning. For those who want to download the video, you can cut it pieces. The question was in the beginning, and we changed the Muslim to answer. How the, how the Quran in chapter 41 says that Allah created the earth and the heaven. The earth created in six days. Two days for the earth, four days for what is in the top of the earth. As you see, chapter 41, verse number 9, chapter 41, verse number 10, chapter 41, verse number 3, 11. How Allah, and 12, how Allah took him six days to create the earth alone, yet he took him only two days to create the heaven, which is way bigger. Way bigger. The earth is a dust in this space. Obviously, the one who wrote those verses, he thinks the earth is bigger. He thinks the sky is empty. There's nothing there. It's just dark. Huh? That's it. So the earth was created in six days, which is a contradiction for the Quran, because the Quran says Allah created the heaven and the earth in six days. And the verses here are so clear. Allah, he created the earth in two days. Read it. And then he placed therein an earth, firm mountains. He did this and this and this and this in four days. It's so clear. The total is six days. And then he went to the sky and the sky was a smoke. There was nothing. And then he made them seven heaven. And then he created the lamps. Four days, six days to create the earth and two days only to create this massive space. Obviously, the one who created the Quran or made the Quran is, is an ignorant. He do not know how huge the space is. He do not know that the earth is very tiny. It is nothing, actually, compared to what we have in the space. Each star of those stars is way bigger and there's an endless number of stars and planets. We do not know what we have there. Nobody knows. What a human being was able to discover right now is nothing compared to what the space holds. We don't know. I want to say thank you for being here. And uh, I hope we learned something good for today. We appreciate all those who download the video, add subtitle. Like today, we don't have too many. Maybe tomorrow I will take a break because, like, look like uh, people are busy these days. So until we see you again, and we appreciate those who support us uh, in Patreon. I say thank you, even though you don't uh, ask me to say thank you, but you, you know I really appreciate you, and we hope that those Muslims they will think carefully about their cult everything we say we show it to you in the in the screen we don't make our own statement we don't make our own translation we read your translation your website your publishing your quotation your words all what we get about islam is coming from you not from me and we show it in the screen so you have no excuse to say he is lying because as you see i just read what is in the screen nothing from my pocket yet they will say his line for this is the only way to defend by repeating funny silly statements which mean they lie to claim that we are lying prove it and all those who they try to defend this time make videos against me well debate me as long as you can make a video you can debate me. Can you? Obviously, you cannot. Talk to yourself and let Muslims leave Islam. Thank you very much, guys, for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord.
Islam is false. God bless. And don't forget, don't hate the Muslims. We don't hate them. Love them. They need your help. They need your help. Don't hate them. They are poor people. Even those who curse us, even those who want to kill me, we shall not hate them. Evil, the devil, is taking over mankind everywhere, not only the Muslims. They are victims of him. They need your help. This is, what, this is why the Lord, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So if the Lord, he says that, that's mean we are the same as a doctor. The doctor, he go to the sick. And if somebody is sick with the devil teaching, you help him, you don't hate him. You give him medication, you don't kill him. So we love the Muslims, we don't want them to be hurt, we want them to see the truth and to save them. And I hope we will be able to save as many as we can. Thank you, God bless you, and see you soon. Bye-bye.